This is a 25 milliliter sample of 0.1 molar acetic acid. And the Ka is 1.76 times 10 to the minus 5. And we're going to be reacting this with 0.125 molar NaOH in different amounts. So the, we have several questions here. We want to know initial pH before I've added any of the base. And then after I've added 10 milliliters, 20 milliliters, and 30 milliliters of base. Okay, so the first situation, we've just got our acetic acid here, and we want to know what the pH is. Well, this is pretty easy. We have a weak acid, and weak acids don't react the same way that strong acids do. They react just a little bit because they don't dissociate completely. And so we're going to use an equilibrium, and we'll use a rice table with our Ka. So we've got our acetic acid plus water making H3O plus and acetate ions. We're starting with 0.1 mole, I should say molar. We lose a little from the left, we gain a little on the right, and we get our equilibrium concentrations. And then to solve for our equilibrium concentration, we use our Ka expression, 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth equals x squared over 0.1 minus x. Because we've got a big difference here between our Ka and our initial uh, concentration, we can neglect x. And we can solve our x value will be 1.33 times 10 to the minus 3. And our pH is the negative log of that, 2.88. So that's our initial pH before we've done anything. Now we're going to see what happens after we've added 10 milliliters of base. This is a situation where I've got a weak acid, my acetic acid, and a strong base. If I have a weak acid and a strong base, the first thing that I need to do is take care of that strong base. It's going to react stoichiometrically, and then I have to see what I have left after that's done. So if I add a strong base, it will react with our acetic acid, and it will form water and the conjugate base. We had 25 milliliters of our 0.1 molar acetic acid, which means we have 0 0.0025 moles. This is a BCA table. So we have to use moles. And for our hydroxide, we're adding 10 milliliters of our 0.125 molar. So that's 0 0.00125 moles of base. We're going to be able to use up our base completely. It's the limiting reactant here. So that determines how much reacts of everything. And we'll gain a little bit of our acetate ion over here on the right. So we'll have none of this left. But it turns out we'll have equal quantities of our weak acid and our conjugate base. This is a buffer. So we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. But if we remember, this is when we have equal quantities of acid and conjugate base. pH will equal the pKa when HA equals A minus. So our pH will just be the negative log of the Ka, which is 4.75. Now we're going to do this again when we've added 20 milliliters of base. We're starting out with our acetic acid. We have 0 0.0025 moles. We've got OH minus, and this time we're adding more, so we have the same number of moles here. 
Again, because this is a weak acid and a strong base, this is going to react stoichiometrically. We're going to use our BCA table with moles. And for our products, we're going to get water and acetate ion. We actually have equal quantities here, so they'll both react completely, driven forward by that strong base, and we'll end up with just acetic acid, sorry, just acetate ion at the end of this reaction. So now what is it that I have? I have a weak base and it's just floating around in solution. I need to make sure that I put this into concentration before I can do my rice table. So I've got 0 0.0025 moles and this is in 45 milliliters. I started with 25 milliliters of my acid and I added 20 milliliters of base. So my concentration will be 0 0.0556 molar for my acetate ion. And this is a weak base, so I need to use the Kb, which I can just do Kw over Ka. And I get 5.68 times 10 to the minus 10th. Okay, so now I'm going to do my rice table. I've got my acetate ion. It's a base. It's going to react with water. So I'm going to get acetic acid and OH minus. My concentration here at the beginning is 0 0.0556 molar. I'm going to lose a little bit, gain a little bit over here on the right. And I can find my equilibrium concentrations. And I'm going to plug those in to my Ka expression. And then I can solve for x. Because my uh, initial concentration is much larger than my Ka. I can neglect X here. And when I solve for X, I get 5.62 times 10 to the minus 6. And that's the same as our OH minus concentration. So I take the negative log of that to get the pOH, which will be 5.25 subtract from 14 to get the pH 8.75. Okay, so we've seen what happens when we add equal amounts of our weak acid and strong base. This is completely neutralized, but the thing that we're left with is the acetate ion, which is the conjugate base of a weak acid. And so the solution is actually basic, even though we've completely neutralized the salt or sorry, the, the acid that we're starting with. We're left with a salt, sodium acetate, that is basic. Okay, the last thing that we're asked to do here is when we add 30 milliliters of base. This is again a strong base and a weak acid. And so the appropriate procedure, because my strong base is going to drive this reaction stoichiometrically forward is to do our BCA table. So we'll have OH minus and our weak acid. We will make water and acetate ion. And in this case, we're starting with the same amount, 0 0.0025 moles of our acetic acid, but we're adding more base, 0 0.00375 moles. We're going to react these stoichiometrically, but this time our acid is the limiting reactant. So we end up with excess moles of our strong base. We also have some of our weak base, the conjugate base over here. 
And in this case, we're just going to find the pH using only the strong base. We've got a mixture of strong base and weak base. And we're going to basically ignore this. That's our procedure. We just deal with this strong base. So we're going to find this in concentration. We have 0 0.00125 moles. We started with 25 milliliters and added 30 of our base. So we've got 0 0.055 liters. So our concentration is 0 0.0227 molar OH minus. And we can take the POH and we get 1.64 and 14 minus that gives us the pH 12.36. Now just for fun, because I know you're wondering, does it matter that we have this weak base over here? Let's do the KB equilibrium for our acetate anion in water. We're starting out with 0 0.0227 molar hydroxide and our acetate ion, it was 0 0.0025 moles, but when we turn it to concentration, we get 0 0.0455 molar. And if this is going to go forward, because we don't have any of our HA here, This is similar to the procedure that we use when we're doing like a polyprotic acid. We've got the first one that reacts and then we carry down both our conjugate base and our OH minus here into the second uh, rice table. So we've got our concentrations. We've got our KB here, 5.68 times 10 to the minus 10th. That's going to be X times 0 0.0227 plus x divided by 0 0.0455 minus x. And we can neglect x here because our concentrations are still orders of magnitude larger than our kb. And when we solve for x, we get 1.14 times 10 to the minus 9. And when we calculate our concentration of OH minus, it's 0 0.0227 plus 1.14 times 10 to the minus 9. You can see this is indeed negligible. So our concentration has not changed for our OH minus. And our pH will still just be the same thing, 12.36. Okay. Okay. Those are several examples where we've worked through situations where you've got acids and bases mixing together, where you have buffers, where you have strong acids or weak acids or strong bases or weak bases. And in each case, there's a different procedure to do, but it's based on these ideas. The strong acids and strong bases will react stoichiometrically. And so we use a BCA table to take care of them. And we always take care of them first. And then we have to reevaluate what do we have after that strong acid or base is neutralized. Then we might have excess base, we might have excess acid, we might have completely neutralized them and be left with a conjugate that we have to deal with. But in each situation, we're going to follow a slightly different procedure. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching.